And now to your health and troubling new results from researchers at MD Anderson Cancer Center. It shows that cervical cancer is up among low-income women. Health reporter Haley Hernandez is here to tell us what else the researchers have found. Actually, this is such a big deal that experts from across the country gathered at the White House yesterday to talk about this. The interest here is not just because, oh, this is really bad news that needs to get fixed, but this is not where they expected the trends to go. Cervical cancer is preventable, so even the research were shocked by what they learned. So I actually really wasn't expecting to see a rise in distant stage cancer. Dr. Uh, Tricia Ambery says while rates of cervical cancer are going down in general, the amount of women getting this kind of cancer, specifically in low-income counties, is going up. The concerning trend that we found is an increase in distant stage cancers among non-Hispanic white women living in low-income counties and sort of an upward trend as well in Hispanic women um, living in low-income counties. And then um, when we looked further into mortality, uh, we saw an upward trend in mortality of, among both non-Hispanic white women and black women. This means women in counties where households make less than $39,000 a year face a risk of cervical cancer and death there's, from it. You know, there's transportation. There's, um, you know, am I going to be able to take off work to go get this screening? Who's going to watch my kids when I do that? Risk factors for cervical cancer are having had HPV, smoking, having three or more full-term pregnancies, and not having pap smears, which Dr. Ambery says is the most important part. Uh, women between the ages of 21 and 29 to get a uh, cyto cytological test every uh, three years. So that would be like a pap smear. And then uh, once you're above the age of 30, 30 and above are usually screened either with a co-test, which is a pap smear and, a prime and an HPV test. The good news is there's growing proof that people who were vaccinated with the HPV vaccine in their younger years are less frequently getting this kind of cancer. And access to that vaccine is more important now with this new information. And recently, the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston released findings about that HPV vaccine showing that two doses offers just as much protection as three doses, which is currently recommended. And some interesting information that came out of that White House panel that I mentioned earlier is that there are brainstorming tools that could soon be available to us, such as like sending screening to your home, just like they do for colon cancer and other brainstorming ideas. They were talking about potentially combining screening so that women don't have to take off of work to go get breast cancer screening, to go get cervical cancer screening. They could maybe do it all in one visit. But basically, the point of this is that this is becoming a priority at the national level, including from researchers here at MD Anderson. Sounds like it needs to be. It needs to be, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. All right, Haley, thank you.